the happy fish keepers out there. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to start episode two on our new series, On the Road with Aquatic Madness. Today we're visiting a, a friend of mine. He also has purchased a few fish from myself. He is a very meticulous, uh, not to say that the hobbyists that I visit or any of them that I've dealt with are not, but Dave, uh, he is very meticulous, beautiful tanks, He's constantly keeping those tanks pristine. I mean, Dave does not miss a date of maintenance. His tanks, and you, you're all going to see it, absolutely beautiful. I can't wait. Let's give you a quick little rundown of what to expect. Dave's got a beautiful pierce eye. I mean, some of you may or may not like pierce eye, but after you see Dave's, you're going to say, I want a pierce eye. Uh, he's got a Regan eye. Um, one cool, cool fish that I'm dying to see is he just recently picked up a hairy puffer. He's only a little guy from what I understand, but awesome, awesome looking puffers. So for you uh, puffer fanatics out there, stay tuned because you're going to love this guy's uh, little hairy puffer. Um, he also has a uh, couple of plecos. I believe one's an L114 and another rhino pleco. A couple of polypterus or bitchers, however you want to say it. And uh, I know he's got a couple other uh, cichlids in there and I, I'm just... I'm losing them um, off the top of my head, but uh, we will definitely see them when we get there, and we will be there shortly. So stay tuned, and uh, don't go anywhere, because uh, believe me you, you're going to love what you see. Dave's got some beautiful setups. See you then. Hey Dave. You found it. I did. I just can't remember which one half the time. Come on in. Take my goodies off out here. Awesome. That's my living room tank. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, man. It's a little lightly stocked right now. Just got rid of my uh, seven red hook silver dollars. That's too bad. That would have looked cool to get on video. They were totally <laughs> sweet, but they would have been spazzing out just the fact that you're standing where you're at. <laughs> were they getting that crazy? Uh, yeah, they were. Were they almost as big as the Pierce? I mean, were they getting big? They were big. They were really big. I mean, not as big as him, but they were still big. Looks nice. Your water is always so beautiful. Always so clear. That's kind of the deal with the wife, to have this big tank here. The deal is it has to be clean because it's in her living room. Yeah, yeah. So. Them, them wives. <laughs> they can get in the way. <laughs> Just kidding to all you wives out there. So how big was your red hook when you got him, uh, when you ordered him? Which one? The red hook. Or oh, the snook, the, I'm sorry. The snook. Um, he has barely grown. 
Yeah. I've uh, did a little research and found out they are slow growers. Another one of those slow growers. Which is actually good because they're very predatory. He'll get used to the he, fish in here. He will take down some big old chunks of shrimp and food that you're thinking, wow, he shouldn't be eating that. <laughs> that huge mouth on those little guys. Nice. Give everybody a little prerequisite to your uh, beer side there. And uh, he's definitely beautiful. I mean, he is, what would you say, is it about 12 inches now? I'm thinking 12, and I'm thinking it's a girl, and I'm thinking she's maxed out, because I got her from you October of 2012, and she was 5 inches at that point. So she's a good, almost good couple years then. Yep, yep. And they hit maturity at about uh, 3 years, so she's, I think, right there. I think she's done. Kind of why I'm leaning toward a girl, because just size. She's a beauty. And your reg and I healed up nicely. Really the, good. The way, from what you described, how she took a beating, or it took a beating, um, it's got some phenomenal, I'm glad you took that from, uh, from Lloyd. It's got some beautiful colors. Yeah, now that the aggressive fish is out of there, it is doing so well. Very personable, very calm. It gets along great. That's beautiful. I hope the one I kept gets that much red in its fins. Throw a little treat in for them so you can see the bottom feeders hopefully come out. I saw your uh, rhino kind of trying to poke out back there. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, Snooky. Oh, you didn't name it Snooky, did you? No. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Currently, it's unnamed. But my wife took the liberty of naming the Ragane um, Rainbow Bright. That fits it well. And then <laughs> the Pierce Eye is named Pork Chop. Yep, I remember Pork Chop. Because when she was little, she was an absolute pig. Still is. There comes the Rhino Pleco. Oh, those are really cool looking. I gotta get me one. Yeah, it's got this really cool little ridge right on its head that uh, most of the plecos don't have. It, it actually reminds me of something from Star Trek, like it should be a Klingon fish. Is his name Klingon? Nope. Unnamed. Worf? He's an unnamed one. There's my hoplo cat. And how big does the cat and the uh, pleco get? I've heard conflicting reports on those plecos up to 16 inches. Wow. Oh. So I'm not positive on that one, but he's got plenty of room in here. The hoplo cat's probably full grown, probably about five and a half, six inches by now. So that's kind of a perfect size catfish for people, you know. I know on Facebook, uh, I've had uh, several questions come you know, forth on some of the mm -hmm. forums as to, you know, catfishes that would do well with cichlids that stay a reasonable size. Um, so that right there, you're saying, would be one of them. Then. It's a perfect fish for not overly aggressive cichlids. It's basically an overgrown quarry cat. See yeah. it dart up to the surface, and it'll get air, come back down. Very, very active catfish. Not super colorful, but active, and the herringbone scale pattern is really kind of a neat little... But it's a different look. Mm -hmm. It just gives you, and that's the reason I like the bitchers so much. It's because it just gives the tank a different look, and you get that with both that catfish and your rhino pleco. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of the polys, you can see the one buried right yeah, down okay. in front. Oh, is that your Dell? Yep, that's the Dell. That's the only ones that I know know of. Are any of the mine you know, that that buries itself? Let's take a look at that. That is cool. The rest of his body is buried. How big is he? I would say maybe about nine inches. Oh, so he's got quite a bit of him buried in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, there he comes. Little wiggle. And out he comes. Pleco was playing with his tail too much. So I, I do get a little interaction between the Pleco and the Polys um, in a bad way. Sometimes it's more... Uh, the territorial issue in this tank as opposed to the want to suck the slime coat off. Correct. Um, so 
You'll see the same thing with the Pleco and the uh, Poplo cat. The Pleco is a little bit one one of the more aggressive species. Is is he always this active? Yes, extremely uh, active Pleco, out all the time. Nice, very nice. He's got a beautiful sail fan, and so far nobody's really ripped into him, so he's doing good. There's one more poly in the very so back corner. I'm trying to get him, and he got his head. Yeah, he's really a shy one. I can't, I can't even get him out with food. Is that just Senegal? Or no, that's the... Uh, the Wixie. Wixie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. It's the one that you had for sale. Still looking to sell him? Don't know. Part of me wants to keep him. He's doing great in this tank. There's no issues with him. Right. It's just he's really shy. I haven't heard that my Wixie doesn't come out unless I'm feeding. And I do, have, you know, my other uh, bitchers definitely... Try to bring the personality out and you know get it so it can you know interact with all the others mm -hmm. but uh yeah I, I see that one probably um the least often often eh. can't speak too well i got I, I love this pleco because every time i've seen them at the local fish stores it's always been small and so you've never really see the colors uh, i'm noticing that on the uh back of the tail fin it's got a yellow stripe is that something that gets more prominent as it gets bigger, or does that just happen to be yours? I don't know. Um, I've seen them in all different color combinations, um, more like a combination of different colors with no really pattern to them, so I, I couldn't tell you. I'm not sure. Right when I want to focus and zoom in on his tail, he uh, oh, disappears. Here goes the Come here. You can't camera hawk. Seriously, every time I move it, you jump in there. I've been thinking about the snooks as well, and so that's why I'm really curious about that. I really like the look of the uh, green ones as well. That was the one I originally wanted, but then to make the wife happy, I chose this one because of the color. It should, should develop the orange, kind of the orange-white combination. And that <laughs> snook was from Wraps. Kind of like the you get with the Midas, the orange. Mm hmm Gotcha. Super mild fish. It, it doesn't mess with anybody, and nobody really messes with it. And you can see who the camera hog is. Yes. She's be got definitely some nice colors, some yellows and browns in her. Very personable, too. She's always out, always watching. Uh oh there it is. Like, I want some air time. <laughs> I think that's the most I've seen it all week. And you moved over here, but that's all you wanted to do is just get unburied. Yep, there's the camera hog again. It's like, I'm so good looking, I want to stay on here. <laughs> right on. So what kind of uh, lighting do we have on here? This is the current USA Satellite Plus lighting. And is this what you ended up with after the issue we had with that one company? Or did you have your... Um, I had the Beamworks on okay. here, which uh, were great economy lights, but they were always kind of really too dim because they were just a single bright. Right. And then the other weird thing is um, the two fixtures actually didn't match light output. So on oh. one side of the tank, it was slightly a different color tone. Yep. And and it just bothered me. So even though it was the same fixture, same fixture, just it yeah. must have been a different LED that they used um, right. because they are Chinese-made fixtures. Um, I still think they're a great deal, and I think they're a great value for the dollar. But uh, these current USAs are just beautiful lights. This is um, in the full spectrum setting right now. And reasonably priced. Not too bad. I got these on a Black Friday deal, so they were cheap. Okay. Otherwise, I think they're a bit pricey, but they, they are very nice lights. I uh, don't use any of the effects, any of the gimmicks. Um, I, I really do think it's gimmicky with the remote control and whatnot, but uh, the full spectrum is just a beautiful light, and I love it. Definitely lights it up nicely. Yep. It brings out the colors in them, especially in the oregani, or oregani, however you want to pronounce it. It's Yeah, if mine uh, will look like that, I will hold on to it. 
actually have to breed the darn things. <laughs> Nice. It's nice. And how? And I know you did something funky. I really shouldn't say funky. Something unique with your filtration too, didn't you? Custom spray bars, which uh, a lot of people with FX5s tend to just use what they give you. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't like how uh, those outputs were that they gave you. So I did uh, black PVC, and I actually ordered it black. It was a little pricey compared to just the Home Depot stuff, but very... Uh, Nice because it blends into the back. You, you can't even tell they're there. No, that's what I'm trying to trying to get the camera to see it. And I was looking for my phone to shine a light up there to look at it, but you're right, you can't see it at all. Yep, just totally blends in, and it gives nice surface agitation. And you can see the surface agitation is beautiful. Yes. Yep. So a lot of poo and things floating in the water right now because I just got through feeding, and they stirred up everything. Oh, that's okay. You can't see it on the camera. So on this particular <laughs> tank, uh, you can see the big inputs, so I've got two FX5s going. Yeah, it's more than enough on what you got here, so yep. keeps this thing nice and pretty. How often do we do uh, do our water changes in gravel vacs? I am very religious about that, so definitely at a minimum twice a week. Usually about 30% twice a week. I find if I go too much, maybe like upwards to even 50, sometimes I'll get little mini cycles happening. So I just keep them, keep them small. Yeah, that's what I do. And I, I, I have a lot of success with, uh, you know, just a little 30, 30, 35% water changes. And, and that's my big concern with a lot of people out there saying, oh, I'm going to do a 50 or 75% water change today. And I'm like, the only thing I can ask myself is why? Right, I, exactly. I, I, I just don't get it. Um, even if you're only doing it once a week, I just don't get it. I don't understand why. Exactly. Totally um, agree. There's no need to go that extreme. Mm -mm. Nope. A good gravel vac. And so in mine, my regimen is, is also twice a week. And the one time a week, uh, I'll do a, you know, the 30% just a water change. And that, that one doesn't take me uh, very long, four hours. <laughs> But uh, the other time a week, I do a thorough gravel vac in all of them, and, and it's, it's about another 30 to 40 percent, um, maybe closer to the 30 percent side. But it's, yeah, I mean, if you, if you want your stuff to continue to look beautiful and nice and, and your fish looking beautiful as, as yours do, you got to make them happy. You got to give them what they like. Yep. And one of the things you may notice is there's no heater. Oh, that's right. You don't have a heater hanging in here. You have yeah. it sitting inside your FX5, don't you? <laughs> Actually, I custom plumbed two of the Hydor 300-watt um, heaters into one of the FX5 lines. So it's all under the stand, so there's no well, visible so heaters inside the tank. So it's not even in the back either. It's down nope, underneath. it's down underneath. Nice. Just a little custom plumbing to do that. And then actually on the other FX5, I'm using a uh, Turbo Twist UV just to make the water a little bit more sparkly. Nothing wrong with that. Because I do get a, a, just a tinge of green water on occasion because this is kind of near a window and the window will get it to green up. Do you mind if we look and sure. see what you did? Oh, it's dark down there, but... It is very dark. Let me see what I can come up with. Yeah, I have one on my phone, and I left it in the car. And I left my phone upstairs. Wouldn't you know? Yeah, it's not that dark. Small flashlight. We'll see what we can see with it. So, not the not the cleanest install, but you can see the the UV filter in the back, the twin heaters plumbed up to the FX5 there. Oh yeah. So you can see my messy clump of wiring for my lighting. I actually have two sets of lights. There's a little set of moonlight that come on um, in conjunction with my other lights, so it gives it a little bit of a dusk dawn effect. Okay. I had actually tried the current uh, ramp timer on this tank and it was horrible. It uh, acted up and I think they have a few bugs to work out there. Um, food wise, you can see my little Omega no one, racks. little Omega one selection. 
and a little NLS. NLS down there. Um, I had also tried the Southern Delight, which was a good food, but uh, in my tank it was a little messy. And uh, I think if I had some overflows, I would suck off the gunk off the top. It would probably be better. Get rid of the uh, film. Yep. So for what I'm feeding right now, the Omega-1 is, is a real clean food. It is definitely cleaner than the NLS. And his stubbornness persisted. Nice. So he's got lots of attitude. I just realized the stupid thing was on pause. I wonder how long it's been on pause. Uh-oh. It's going to piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see if uh, when I changed it to light, if it went on, if it did, if, that's, if it paused itself. Nope, that wasn't it. So I don't know when it paused, but that's all right. We'll have to recap everything. I'm going to have to go back over and look at that puffer. Sorry, guys. We were on pause for a little while. <laughs> and I'm sure we missed something, but I'm not sure what it was. I think I'd get used to this, but oh well. So, so both of these tanks also have LED lighting. The puffer tank has the current um, satellite fixture, not the plus. It is just a basic LED with uh, some wired-in controls. I do like the fact that you can dim both the blue and the white. So right now is not at full brightness. Oh, okay. It, it gets very, very bright. But with such a shallow tank, I don't have to turn it up. Right. But uh, the fixture is absolutely tiny. I cannot believe how small that thing is. And the, I like the idea of the, the dimming feature. That is kind of cool. And when you say tiny, just slimline and thinness, right? Well, the width of it, if you actually can see it, that thing oh. is probably only about two inches wide. So is this the brand that uh, Corey sells? No, he sells okay. the Finex. Okay. And then you get uh, one of the big marine lands up there, right? Actually, that's the Aquion oh. Modular. So it has two um, tubes in it right now. It's got the Color Max and then the standard one that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually turned the Color Max on since you were coming for filming. But if I leave it on, the algae really grows in this tank. I bet. So I think it would actually make a pretty good grow light if I actually wanted to do some live plant in here. I could add one more of those color max and probably have some good success with some of the lower light type plants in there. Interesting. That's good to know because I think I want to start a, a six foot long planted tank and put something different in there. Not sure though. I'm not a green thumb kind of guy, so I, I yeah. really have not <laughs> attempted live plants. But uh, some of them sound like they are so easy, I'm, I'm tempted to try. A lot of upkeep. i got to have a lot more time, I, I, at least I assume. I'd have to really pick the brains of some of the uh, planted tank hobbyists. And I'm, I'm sure it's probably a lot like salt water. Once you get it to a point, it... Uh, it pretty much maintains itself. Yeah, I can see why the uh, Red is Lead has kicked the Placo out. It uh, fits in there quite nicely. Mm-hmm. Come on up here in the front puffer so I can see you again, because I was an idiot and left my uh, camera on pause. Usually after he eats, he usually just veges and, and digests, so I think, he, I think he might be doing a little exercising, kind of getting it all settled in place. Don't exercise yet. You still got more food over there. Now, is he, from your experience so far, is he done eating? Do you need to remove that shrimp that's yeah, still I'll, in there? I'll pull it out. He's done. Gotcha. Usually I don't even feed him that large of a, a piece. Usually I cut it in half. I tend to like to do smaller smaller feedings with him. So he's good now probably for a good couple days. Definitely. Interesting. Yep. He's set for a little bit. And one of the things that motivated me to go with this particular puffer is that uh, they do not require as much teeth maintenance. So probably realistically I may have to feed him once a month something a little bit on the crunchier side to keep his teeth in check. 
So that's what you mean by teeth maintenance is and just giving them something like a dog biscuit for a dog to help keep their... Exactly. Really. So something with a harder shell like a, you know, frozen crayfish or something that he has to actually munch into a little bit. Sorry, I kicked that off. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've noticed that uh, some of the uh, puffer owners uh, feed their puffers clams on the half shell and, and they break it open. Does that constitute working the teeth a little bit to work that... Usually because he would have to scrape on the shell to get mm -hmm. the meat out. I've never actually tried with him yet to see if he would feed off of a clam like that. Mm -hmm. um, he has associated motion with feeding. So anything that drops in the tank and he sees it fall, he goes after. But you notice the, the pieces of food just sitting on the ground over there that he didn't go back to eat. Right. Yeah, if it's not if it's not in a moving situation, he pretty much leaves it alone. Gotcha. He's not if it's not sitting on the if it's just sitting on the ground, he's done with it. Right. So that's uh, hence the reason why you sticking your hand in there is giving you concerns for him to uh, chomp on you, <laughs> devour your little finger. Oh, it would it would drop blood. <laughs> yeah, I mean you saw how he just bit through that. Oh yeah. That shrimp. And yeah, made no uh, took no effort whatsoever. Yeah, he's going out for his uh, after meal swim. Yeah, I did a lot of research before deciding to jump into getting a puffer. So what was what was that you said again? You did what? A, a lot, lot of research. Of research. Hear that, you two? How many times have we tried to help people or or have answered questions uh, from people that jump into purchasing a fish and, and without any research? Uh, I applaud you for that one. So what did you learn about him? That uh, anything exciting that, or anything that you actually have to be prepared for? Or is he? He is actually one of the easier puffers to take care of. That's mm -hmm. kind of uh, why I chose him. And the other thing I liked about him is he's not really the type that buries themselves. Okay. There's a few other puffers in uh, his category, like the Arrowhead and the Congo puffer, they will bury themselves to the point you don't even see them. So he doesn't bury himself. He will sit out like a rock and change color to blend his environment, but at least he's out. So you always see him. Nice. No uh, special water conditions for him? Nope. Though the one thing is because of the type of foods that he's eating, like the raw clams and shrimp and things like that, the water quality can go down very quickly. So after you leave, I'll suck out the leftover pieces and then with his tank he gets a little more water changes than typical so probably upwards to three water changes a week for sure smaller but just right. more more often it's all right i'm sure he doesn't mind and how do you do your water changes you just flip the hose out the window <laughs> Nope, here um, I have a bathroom right next door, so I just hook up the python right to the, the sink in the bathroom and, and do it that way. Yep, especially considering these two tanks a 72 gallon bow and a 40 breeder are upstairs in a two story house. So it's good that you have an upstairs ba bathroom. Yep, otherwise, I would not have even attempted to have the tanks up here if I had to lug buckets up and down the stairs. Well, that's just it, you know. I had a, I had a tank upstairs. Um, at my place and it was a little 40 breeder. I just stuck the hose out the window but I noticed that it started to uh, started to turn the side of my house a different color. <laughs> like wait a minute how can I be doing that? That water's supposed to be clean. But uh, it does it does help to have uh, um, some way of doing it so my new place will just have a nice uh, big fish room and I don't have to worry about it. I'll just live in my fish room. <laughs> have my office in there, have, have a bed in there. So I guess you would call my new fish room my bedroom, right? <laughs> I like his colors. It's... I'm happy with him. He's really nice looking. So what uh, kind of deal did Lloyd want to work with you for him? Well, since uh, I got a fish downstairs from him at no charge, we're just doing a, an even trade that way. I'm just going to let him take this one. Uh, God, you're, uh, 
You're gonna hate it. I know it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you, you know, honestly, every time I've had an Amphilophus, I've hated it for a while, and then after I got rid of it, I've missed it. So I, I'm kind of thinking I'm, I'm going to regret this. Yep. But then part of me is actually thinking that I may just turn this into a community tank with angelfish and... <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're cichlids, they count. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do. You won't like angels. I don't know, I haven't had angels in a long time. I've had them before. They're not that exciting to me, but... I just right. haven't decided what I want to do. It's only, it's only a 72 gallon, so it limits the type of fish I can put in there. So you hear that, YouTube? Help him out. It's a 72 gallon bow front. He wants a solo pet. We're all going to pretty much say, well, get a Midas, get a Trimac, get an Amphilophus, get an Oscar. <laughs> Come on now, help him out. Tell him what, what, it, what would go perfect in this tank. I've done the Oscar thing. That's right, you did have Oscars yeah. downstairs. That was after the big mishap where I mm -hmm. put uh, some wild caught fish into my 210. Didn't quarantine them. Ended up wiping out almost my entire tank. I lost a big... 12-inch, um, two-year-old male Midas, and so ever since I just haven't been able to find another Midas or a replacement that's been the same. That particular Midas was one of the most peaceful, easygoing fish I've ever owned. Whereas every other fish I've tried so far, the Hoga and Red Devils and other Midas, have just been little pills. Yep. So. And when you get that one, that one fish that appeals to everything about it, that you're looking, especially with the nice peaceful attitude, yeah, it's it's hard to replace it. He was probably as calm as my parasite down there. That's kind of that's that's awesome. There's a uh, a gentleman I've gotten to know pretty well lately via Facebook, Scott Hoover, and uh, you have to check his video out on YouTube once in one of these times. He's got a, a huge Midas tank. And he had everything in with them, mollies, neons, and they just all coexisted. It's uh, really an awesome, awesome sight. And uh, he's just now starting to get back into the uh, fish keeping and uh, looking for some good good Midas. And uh, he found out from Raps, who he's bought a lot of his stuff from, that Raps isn't going to go to uh, the locations to, to get the Amphilophus anymore, the Midas. Um, so he doesn't know when uh, mm. he'll ever have the Midas again. So i am uh, been looking around locally because I know Tom um, bought one or several from uh, Jeff before he, you know, one of his last orders. But he lost his in that uh, big fiasco he had with his uh, his ex-wife. Mm. Um, so yeah, so we're on the lookout of some nice big orange beautiful Midas. I know I have a couple of barred ones from Raps last, you know, shipment, but they're barred, and I, I've never had a barred Midas, so I got them just to see exactly what they look like. Now he decides to glass bang. <laughs> nice. <laughs> when I brought the camera up to him, he came right up to the camera too. Let's see if he can do it again. Do you want to come up and say hi? Come on. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know you don't want to get rid of him. <laughs> I'm not making it easy, am I? Well, who knows? Maybe I'll just turn it into a big goldfish tank. Yeah, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> well, YouTube, that was Dave's place, and uh, I'm going to take some pictures now and add them along with it. And again, let us know. Give us some ideas. What should Dave do with his 72 bow front? Goldfish. Another puffer. <laughs>